Welcome to another informative video brought to you by Ortruo. The last time, we look at how PLC came to be. The work of Dick Morley and Joseph Struger was discussed extensively. We also look at the various communication protocol we have in industrial automation. In this series, we will be looking at relay logic. The similarities between a hardwired relay logic and a PLC ladder rung will be discussed in detail. Stay tuned. Eric. I will like to get to downtown. Will you like to come along? That wouldn't be a problem. Hola Alicia. Qué coincidencia. ¿Hacia dónde te diriges? Voy de compras. Y ya sabes en nuestro barrio. No hay nada de eso. De ahí las necesidades. Ok, perfecta. ¿Y tú? ¿A dónde te diriges? Bueno. Voy a salir con un amigo. De todos modos. Te alcanzaré la próxima semana en el trabajo. Who was that? That was Alicia. A colleague of mine. She is going for shopping downtown. So such a coincidence. All right, perfect. Can you now tell me more about the normally open and normally close manipulations? Relay logic is a hardwired control system using instrumentation, switches, timers, relays, contactors, motors, and actuators. In the second industrial revolution, machine and process automation were controlled using relay logic. Now, let's make it sync. We will look at a typical direct online starter. We all know that a typical DOL has a power circuit and a control circuit. And contactors are used to control the opening and closing of the power termination to the motor at the discretion of the operator. Now let go a little bit deeper. Ordinary when we push the start button, the current will flow to the contactor and it will switch position, and as a result, power will get to the motor. However, as soon as we remove our hands from the start button, the contactor de energizes and power will stop going to the machine. So one of the ways in which we can stop this problem is to introduce a retainer circuit because the start button we are using is not a spring-loaded type that stays in either press or open position when triggered. So basically, the incoming wire will be terminated to one end of the normally open, while the other end will be terminated to the coil of the contactors. So when we press the start button again, the contactor energizes and subsequently power will get to the motor and it will start spinning. This time when we remove our finger from the start button the contactor will remain energized. Alright. Perfect. Those days, contactors and relays were used to control equipment at the discretion of the operators. So there is a button that is triggered for that. Perfect. I have two questions. Please can you explain how contactors work and can you also explain the difference between a relay and a contactor? Okay. That wouldn't be a problem. Contactors and relays work on the principle of electromagnetic inductions. That is when the coil is energized. Magnetic field will be developed as a result, and because the other part within the contactors or relay is metallic. Hence the metallic switch will be attracted towards the energized coil and the open contacts will now be closed and currents will flow from the incoming contactor and relay to the load. 1. The open power contact will be closed. The auxiliary's contact also switches positions. That is normally open will become normally closed, while normally closed will become normally open. As for the difference between the contactors and relays, 
Contactors are used for higher current applications while relays are used for low current applications. Overall, in both, the controlling circuit that is the coil of the contactors or relays. It is usually powered by a much lower voltage. This is done in order to reduce the risk posed to the operator when the switch button is pressed in the event of faults or malfunctions. Hardwire installation is labor intensive because of the number of devices use. This involves the use of breakers, contactors, and relays. It also requires a lot of space which is due to the number of devices used during installations. Troubleshooting is known to be extremely difficult because of the large amount of wire and devices used during installations. Now let's look at the correlation between a hard wire relay and PLC. In PLC, the control schematic will be converted to a ladder format. So apart from the power circuit, there is no need for any external circuit. Instead, there will only be a single wire termination between the digital output module of the PLC and the contactor. So when the conditions are met, which could be when the operator presses the start button, or when the sensor is triggered. 24 volts will be sent by the output module of the PLC down to the contactor and the motors or load will be energized. So basically, what Dick and his team did was to develop a device that can do this function without the need for complex wiring. Just a single wire termination between the PLC output module and the contactor will do. Now, let me test your brain a little bit. Emergency stop button which is also known as e-stop. What configuration do you think this device will be? Well, I believe it should be terminated to normally open configurations. Which means, when the button is pressed, 24 volts should be sent to the input module of the PLC. Okay. Although it is not advisable to terminate the button that way. Again, I am not going to say that you are wrong. But the best way is for the emergency stop button to be terminated to the normally closed contact of the e-stop. That is, 24 volts should be present at the input module of the PLC and it is only when there are issues which is when the button is pressed that there should not be present a voltage at the input module of the PLC. The reason why it should be terminated this way is to prevent a situation where, when at normally open configuration, and when the button is pressed, the PLC will still believe that the button is not pressed because sometimes, the button can be defective. Perfect. I now fully understood how PLC came to be. In the next series, we will be looking at the programmable logic controller in proper. The intricate part that made up this device will be discussed in detail. Now let's do a quick recap. We started off looking at hardwired control system, its typical application in direct online starter was discussed in detail. Finally, we ended off looking at the correlation between a hardwired control system and a programmable logic controller. Hope you have learned something new today. See you in the next one.